Greetings, happy coders, happy Halloween. Welcome to another video. And today I'll be showing off my Halloween treat or trick, both maybe, for uh, my Patreon supporters. Um, you may remember a couple of years ago, I did uh, this thing, which I'm showing you now on uh, Manic Miner, which uses uh, ULA Plus, and uh, it changes the Manic Miner palette and it allows you to have an effect like this. And uh, you're in the cave and of course you've got a lamp and um, you can look left and right and spot the keys and so on. And uh, lots of people perhaps didn't necessarily know, you can also press the keys one and two and you can uh, adjust the lamp to be wide or narrow so you can actually look further along. That was helpful for some rooms where you wanted to sort of uh, look a little bit further away to where you were going to plan your route, so to speak. Um, anyway, that was a couple of years ago and uh, that's still available for my patron supporters, of course. And uh, I was thinking about other games that I could apply this to and um, obviously last Christmas I did uh, Attic Attack and I thought an Attic Attack game with this kind of lamp effect could look really nice but I wanted to do something slightly different to this and uh, I'll show you that in a second but just to explain a little bit about ULA Plus um, it's a, a kind of add-on it replaces rather the original ULA it's usually done in emulation although computers like the Spectrum Next and others do support it and it replaces the original ULA and allows you to have um, a colors which are chosen from a palette right so then you can define your own colors so for example in this one I defined all these different oranges and that's how that worked right so um, in terms of the inks it actually allows you to have I think uh, 32 different ink colors so um, what I've done is gone for a kind of four color route, four color method. So I've got a full range of reds, a full range of greens, uh, yellows and, and cyans, right? So that means that with Attic Attack, of course, because you've got the colored keys and the colored doors. So, so this, this system with the orange, it just wouldn't work because you wouldn't know what keys you were picking up and which doors were locked and so on. So it was obviously not going to not going to work that way so um, after a fair bit of uh, fiddling about I came up with a system I uh, had to clear up some of the memory from Attic Attack what I did is I moved the menu and a couple of uh, like the chicken you know the famous chicken I moved that into um, a bank so this is a 1 to 8k mod um, but I did an Attic Attack 1 to 8k mod with music anyway so that this also has that music so it's got music and it's also got this um, lamp light effect. Anyway, without further ado, I suppose you probably want to see what it, how it works, and it's really actually worked out quite nicely. So um, let's get started with it. I'll just reset. Should be able to just boot up. All right. Okay. There we go. So you can choose. Obviously, flash is disabled in this because it's using colors instead. Of, so. Um, Anyway, I'll stick with the night and um, let's get going. I should probably just adjust the volume as well, just a sec. Let's get a little bit of music at least, eh? That doesn't cause a... I suspect that's going to cause um, some kind of feedback loop. So I'll switch over to these headphones so that that doesn't happen. Okay. And let's check that. How are we doing? There we go. Okay, so if I walk up to the door, you see? See, it's quite... 
like you like he's got a little torch, you know. And then if you look around the room, look. I think it looks really nice, actually. Oh, that's no good though. Now this room has a little bit of slowdown, right? Because there's so much in the actual room. But in general. There you can see the inventory and I've actually put color in there as well. So you can see there's a little bit of shadow on there. Um, this room quite shows it off quite nicely as well. So I'll just wander around a little bit. It's quite dark in the basement, which I suppose is a good thing. Trying to show it off at the same time as I also added a little light onto the weapon. So if you see, the the weapon leaves a little trail of light, um, just to kind of help the player. interesting that's a bug isn't it that's a new one on me must be to do with the color that's supposed to kill him isn't it I'll make a note of that because the keys didn't work when I changed their colors so I'll obviously have to run through those and make sure they work okay so this is a pre-release after all <laughs> hopefully I'll have it out today in Halloween we'll see certainly this one will be out for the Patreon supporters. And you can see the light working quite well there on the on the torch. You see how it just yeah. I'm actually not bad at this game, but obviously talking at the same time. So, yeah. Okay, so I'll need to make a mental note. A couple of things I need to check with the enemies. Probably the cross doesn't work on the vampire as well if, the, if it's color dependent, which I didn't think it was, but apparently it is. So um, I reckon I'll be able to figure that out, though. Most of the main problems were sorted so just to finish up then um from a technical point of view once i freed up some space i created a, a buffer and uh, i put it at address d800 which is exactly um, 8k above the uh, attribute buffer on the spectrum memory so that means that you can flip between them by just um setting the bit 7 on the attribute address so it can do it quite quickly and uh, within that in, in, and inside there i've got um some code which writes brightness levels so it's like a brightness overlay if you like so when it um and then you've got these four sets of uh red green uh, cyan and yellow and they are sort of brightness settings from uh zero to seven and then what happens is when it comes to draw a, a any part of the screen there with the color, uh, like the items and stuff like that, then it looks at the um, color and then it jumps by flipping that bit and then it reads the brightness 
level and then it adds or applies the brightness level to the color so the colors are all set at brightness level one I was thinking about doing it as zero because then you just wouldn't see anything except what was in your field of view, but um, you know within the light. Uh, but I think that would probably be a bit too tough. Um, all right, maybe I'll add it as an option, but it's it's quite extensive because you have to. I've had to go through the whole um, game source and change all the colors to um, those four colors, uh, either red, green cyan or yellow and um, have them all set at that brightness level of one by default and then it reads this brightness table and, and adjusts it right so and that's how i'm able to have um, different colors with different brightnesses so for example even something like say the bookcase when you go up to it it's a yellow bookcase but it's got a blue and a green book and so the blue and the green book will also have their own brightness levels like that so with all of that in mind i guess we can go back and have another quick game and uh just a second you can think about all of that stuff while i do that so so if you look at the door for example and the up the top here you'll see look it highlights the yellow and the blue and the red of the um the uh, pictures and the blue of the like that so yeah I mean for you know for an old computer like this it's a pretty nice effect isn't it look look at that you see you can see the colors changing on the on the rug and the So the only thing that doesn't light up is the the room, uh, the the walls of the room, and um, but most of them are just thin lines anyway. So it probably doesn't matter too much, and it would be even more work. It's just at the edge of what the processor can handle here with the the music and stuff. I've actually disabled some of the sounds um, to enable the music, like the noise as you pass through the room and different things like this are disabled just because. Um, it makes the music play smoothly because the beeper just slows things down just a bit too much. Anyway, I think we'll leave it there. I hope you enjoyed it. As I said, I hope you have a very happy Halloween. And uh, if you'd like to, uh, if, you'd, if you're not already a Patreon supporter and you'd like to support me, that'd be fantastic. You get sort of a dozen or so of the games that I've done. And of course, all the ones I'm working on, you get pre-access to that as well for testing and feedback and then of course you get all these little mods as well so um that is uh, patreon.com happy coding zx and uh, if you would like to support me i would really appreciate it it really helps to free up some of my time to do more fun stuff like this all right so take care until next time as always happy coding bye bye